Recently, I put out a video about Excel's new group by function. And to recap, the group by allows us to take a table of data like this and aggregate it to show totals and subtotals. The group by function and the companion pivot by function are a nice alternative to having to create a pivot table for this type of report. And one of their greatest strengths is the need to not have to refresh. As soon as the data changes, the group by and pivot by functions recalculate. So you don't need to right click refresh like you do in a pivot table. Now the group by and pivot by functions are not a replacement for pivot tables because they can't do a lot of the higher level calculations that pivot tables do so well. But they're really great for simple reports like this. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in this video's description or you could just click the card in the upper right hand corner. But you should check it out because it's really cool what the group by function can do. But one of the things I didn't explain was how I did the artwork. Now the artwork is not a product of the group by function. One of our wonderful BCTI viewers asked if I could create a video explaining how I did the artwork. Now looking back at the file, this artwork was not just manually painted. We need to do it in such a way that the artwork becomes dynamic. So if I were to come in here and change one of the entries, the group by function is going to update to include those entries, but I want the artwork to modify automatically. So if I add another category, maybe returns, again, we want that artwork to take care of itself or just to undo that real quick. Or what if we were to go in here and add some new products? I want that new category to appear, but I also want the artwork to be put in place. So let's see how we could start with the raw group by output, get our headers artistically painted, our grand totals painted, find all the subtotal rows, get them painted, but then also customize the titles of those rows so they stand out from the actual products. This will all be controlled by conditional formatting. So in our file, we've got our table of data, and we also have the output of the group by function as created in the prior video. Now at present, the output of the group by is only extending down here to row 23. But we know that if we add information to this table, that that output table is likely to grow. So when we apply our conditional formatting, we don't want to highlight just this area. We want to highlight this plus all future expansion area. So let's start with painting the header row. Now the easy thing here is this header row is not going to change. So we don't have to use conditional formatting for this one. We can just hard code it. So I'm going to go up here and give it a fill color. I'll give it a new font color and I'll make it bold. And that's all we need to do for the header. Now our first conditional format will be to detect the words grand total. Now if the words grand total exist, we don't want to paint just that cell. We want to paint that entire row. So we'll have to write a custom formula for this. So let's first select our data range. I'm going to select the current and all future area. So for each of these examples, I'm going to start in G3 and then fill all the way down to say I-150. Just some area you know you'll never get to. So we'll do G3 through I-150. We'll go up to conditional formatting, new rule, and we're going to use a formula to determine the cells to format. So for the new rule, we'll start with an equals and we'll begin our search for the words grand total in cell G3. Now I do want to examine every cell on row three, but I want to compare each of those cells to column G. So I'm going to press the F4 key three times to lock the column reference. The row reference will remain relative because I want to look at every row in the highlighted area. And now we just ask the question, does that cell equal the words grand total? So if a cell in column G has the words grand total, every cell on that same row is going to get a color. So we'll go to format. I'm going to give it a very dark brown fill. And then for the font, we'll give it a bold italic and a pale yellow. I'll hit OK, hit OK, I'll scroll up. So we have our fixed painted header that never changes, but now we have a dynamic grand total. And just to prove that it's dynamic, if I were to go into the data and add something new, like shoes, we can see that the grand total row now moves. I'm going to hit undo. Now let's move on to painting the subtotal rows. For the subtotal rows, we're going to have to search for two criteria. What makes something a subtotal row is that in this case, this middle column, the channel name, will not have any information. So this row here is a subtotal row, just like this one is a subtotal row, and this one, and this one, and this one. So if this middle column is blank, it's a subtotal row, but that can't be the only thing we check for because all of the future expansion areas also have blank cells and we don't want those to get colored. So we'll have to check that not only is this middle column blank, but is the first column not blank. So if there's something in the first column and nothing in the second column, it's a subtotal row, and I want to paint it. So let's select our target area again. So we'll go G3 through I-150, again accounting for future expansion. 
we'll go to conditional formatting, new rule, and use a formula. So we'll start with equals, and since we're comparing two things and they both have to be true, we're going to wrap these two questions inside of an AND function. So the first will be to check cell G3. I'm gonna press the F4 key three times, again, to lock that column reference, but leave the row reference relative, and see if cell G3 is not equal to blank. So if it's not blank, comma, the second test will be cell H3. Press F4 three times, again, lock that column reference, let the row reference move, and we're checking to see if that cell is equal to nothing, or is empty. Close parentheses. Our formatting for this one, we're gonna go up to fill, give it a pale yellow fill with bold black font. Hit OK, hit OK, and now we've got a problem. We'll click to get rid of the highlight. Our subtotal rows did get the formatting that they needed, but the grand total row has been corrupted. See, the problem with the grand total row is column G is not empty, but column H is, so it's getting the rule that was applied to the subtotal rows being also applied to the grand total row. We have a conflict of rules. If we go back to conditional formatting, manage rules, the subtotal rule is blending with the grand total rule. What we need to do are two things. First, we need to take the grand total row and have it be processed before the subtotal row. Now, if we hit apply, the grand total row is being applied before the subtotal rule. Now, I wanna make sure that no aspect of the second rule is incorporated into the first rule, so I'm going to check this box that says stop if true for the first rule. So if column G has the word grand total, apply this formatting and don't examine any further rules. We'll hit okay. And now let's move on to the final touch, adding the word total after each subtotal title. For this particular rule, I only want to apply it to cells in column G. So our range of application will be G3 through G150. So just this column, the current area and any future expansion area. We'll go to conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula. So we'll start with an equals. Now, if our first check was in cell G3, what we want to do is see if the neighboring cell H3 is blank. So we'll say if H3, and we're going to hit that F4 key three times because we're going to lock that column reference but let the row reference move. So for cell G3, if H3 is equal to nothing, that means we're on a subtotal row, we'll go to Format. Now we've already applied the fill color and the font color, but this is going to be a custom number format. And we're going to go to Custom, and in the Type field, we're going to put an at sign that basically says take any text that happens to be there, and we're going to add to the end of that a space and the word total. And I put those in double quotes. So whatever text is there, concatenate the word total to the end of it. We'll hit OK, hit OK. Now notice we got the word total at the end of every subtotal, but we also got the word total at the end of the grand total. And grand total total doesn't exactly read well. This falls back to the order of application of the rules. So if we go back to conditional formatting, manage rules, we can see that the addition of the word total is being processed before grand total. We'll take the rule we just created, demote it to the bottom of the list, or just anywhere after the grand total rule, hit apply, and now the addition of the word total will not be attached to the words grand total. Because remember, after we ran that grand total rule, we stopped processing any further rules. So the first rule will hit the grand total row, stop processing. If that doesn't count, then we check the other rows to see if the first column is not empty, but the second column is. And if that's the case, you're a subtotal row. And then finally, we check column G by scanning column H for empty cells. And if we hit an empty cell, that must be a subtotal row, concatenate the word total. Now let's see how dynamic this is. If we were going to channel and add something like warehouse, the group by has recalculated everything and all the colors have moved accordingly. If we were to add some new products like shoes, again, everything is adjusting automatically. So we'll use the group by function as discussed in an earlier video to build the raw data, but then employ some creative conditional formatting to give us all of our artwork. Remember to download this file link in the video description so you can go back and look at all of the rules that I created. But don't forget about the order of application. So this video was in response to a question that came up in the comments of the previous video so if you've got a question about this or any other aspect of Excel, Power BI, Word, Outlook, PowerPoint, put it down in the comments and I'll be happy to make a video for you. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate your time. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.